How many minutes do we have? Oh, yeah. Still have time? Good luck. Okay, friend. I want to share this story with you. You know what one of our problems is? We always regret everything. The Talmud says that wicked people are filled with regret. So one great rabbi says, oh, it's beautiful, right? They regret everything they did. He says, yeah, but that's all they do. They regret it, right? And they never do better because they have no time to think how to do better because they're so filled with regret. You know, people who walk around feeling always guilty about everything they do, they never do anything. They're too guilty to do something good. Anyway, so this is a good story. Yeah. You know, friends, what our problem is, our deeper problem, we always regret not the things we do wrong, we feel a little bit guilty. What we regret most is always our good deeds. Whenever we have a chance to do somebody a favor, we always regret it after. There were about a thousand reasons to think, ah, stupid, you know, it really took me for a ride, this person. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Let me share a story with you. I have to throw it to some people. One of our holy masters, the holy Lublina, the Sea of Lublin, a story about 160 years ago, and his highest pupil was called the Holy Jew. The Seer of Lubin was a great rabbi, and, the, Seer, and the, the Holy Jew at that time was not a rabbi yet, he was just a young man. So one Friday afternoon, like today, he walked in to his holy master's house, and the Seer of Lubin says to him, I cannot let you walk around like this on Shabbos. Your shirt is torn, it's, it's dirty, it's terrible. Walks into his bedroom, comes out with a beautiful shirt, and says, here's a gift for you. In honor of the Holy Shabbos, here's my shirt. And you know, sweetest friends, if you know anything about, about Kabbalistic Judaism, you know, the body has garments and the soul has garments. One is a garment or the other, one is a garment or the other. The seer Pluni would never give a shirt unless all the spiritual garments of the Holy Jew were complete. So it's the greatest honor in the world to receive a shirt. But the Yitha Kodesh, the Holy Jew, was so humble, he thought, he just gave it to me because my shirt is dirty. He walks on the street, and in Lublin, like in every other city there, not everybody's a drunkard, but, you know, there's always one drunkard. You know, there are a few kinds of drunkards. Some drunkards are just drinking for all the people of the city. Some people drink for the people in the country, and some are so exalted, they drink for the whole world, right? So this Moshe, the drunkard, was on the level he was drinking for the whole world. He was really heavy into it. So you can imagine how his shirt looked like. So the Holy Jew, Friday afternoon, on his way to immerse himself in holy water, meets Moshe, the drunkard. He says, Moshe, you cannot walk around like this on Shabbos. Your shirt is so dirty. Here I give you a shirt which I got from the Holy Sea of Lublin. But you know, Moshe is not only a drunkard, he's a shrewd businessman. He knows for a shirt of the Sea of Lublin of the Holy Master. He can get something. He runs right back to the bar, to the Kretschmer, and he says, Hey, I got something here. I got a shirt of the Sea of Lublin. <coughs> anyway, he got himself a deal with the bartender. He gets free drinks all year long. I give out. But you know, the bartender was even more shrewd. Monday is a marketplace. Market day in Lublin. He went out on the marketplace, stood on a chair, and he yelled out, I have a shirt of the Sea of Lublin. It promises you success in business. If you don't have children yet, you might be married for 25 years the moment you wear the shirt. And he gave up this whole thing. Everything the Lublin doesn't want. He saw the shirt for 10,000. The Sea of Lublin was so broken. Because he gave it to the Holy Jews with the deepest joy, deepest friendship. And he really had no right to give it away. You know, friends, sometimes someone gives you something and you can share it with somebody else. Imagine I marry a girl, put a ring on her finger, and the next day I ask her, where's the ring? 
Just I give it as a present to somebody. I say, you're crazy. No. It doesn't go. Certain things are just for you. Don't give it away. Then there are certain things which I have to give away. And you know, you have to be you have a very deep person. Because basically, the deepest secrets of life is always this deep intuition when, okay, the Gita Kurs, the Holy Jew moved off. And the Sirpin was very angry to him. So the Holy Jew went to the forest, sat under the tree, and was crying. And according to our tradition, whenever a person is very sad, someone comes from heaven to give you a little bit of courage, a little bit of strength. So, another drunkard came and sat next to him. And he says to him, why are you crying? He told him the whole story. And according to the tradition, it was a light of the prophet, maybe. And maybe it was just a drunkard. Either way, it's okay with me. The drunkard says, let me tell you a good story. A few hundred years ago, in the city, there was a thief. Let's call him Bianca, the thief, but a real thief, a professional. When you stood next to him, he didn't have to look for anything. He had it all in his pocket. Don't waste, put your hand in your pocket, it's not there anymore. But he was never caught. He was a real professional. You know, some people really not, are not thieves, they're talented thieves, you know. I'm sure someday there'll be PhDs in, in stealing. If it's not already, I don't know. It's in disguise, right? But then someday it'll be just open. Review teaching. Anyway, so this Abraham the thief was really strong stuff. So he kept on stealing, stealing, and then finally he felt it's below his dignity to put his hands in your pocket, and he retired. He had so much money he bought himself a house and lived happily after. But you know, friends, if you stop stealing, eventually your, your money runs out. Listen to this audacity, the biggest chutzpah in the world. After his money ran out, he came to the Jewish community. He says, listen, I'm poor. I want you to support me. I say, you know, you're going too far. You give us back what you stole, and then we'll start supporting you. He had a neighbor who was very wealthy. One Friday afternoon, this very wealthy Jew was passing by the house of the thief. And he sees his thief was sitting by the door of his house. Broke. Really hungry, really at the end. He saw it at the end. He went home to his wife and says, you know, I don't care. This person is dying of hunger and he's our neighbor. Let's send him some food. From that day on, every Friday they would send him enough food to keep him going for a whole week. This went on for many years. One day there were two funerals in that city. A big funeral, the rich man had died, everybody came to give him his last honor, and the thief had died. Just maybe ten thieves congregated to give him the last honor, obviously he was their teacher. They got their PhD in stealing from him, so just to thank him. So it was a little funeral and a big funeral. Both of them arrived in heaven at the same time. And both stood before the heavenly court at the same time. Okay, the heavenly court says, which man you go first? And without sounding stupid, it's on the highest level. There's a scale in heaven. On the right side, the, book, the good deeds. On the left side, all the mistakes. Okay, the good angel comes a little suitcase, you know, puts down a few good deeds on the right side. Brother Satan comes with trucks. Okay, the rich man doesn't have a living chance to go to heaven. And carloads, another truckload, another carload. I mean, it's a joke, right? On one side it's maybe two pounds, on the other side it's tons. The rich man closes his eyes and he says to himself, Aye. Aye. One more second of being happy. He opens his eyes and he hears the heavenly judge and says, the rich man, the heavenly gates are open for you. I can't believe it. He says to the angels, what happened to all my sins? They began laughing. 
It is, don't you know that your friend, the thief, stole them away? <laughs> so the drunkard says to the holy Jew, don't regret that you gave him the shirt. In the other world, you better.